It's a beautiful day out here at the Big Lake, and today we're talking about those baits and presentations that really shine in the month of April. You really don't want to miss this one. Stick around. Oh, I got him. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Oh, that's a good one. The boy howdy strikes right off of the bat. Good fish. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have your chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as we roll from March into April, much of the country is now getting ready to enter the spawn. Much of the Mid-South has firmly started to go into the spawning phase, while even as far as the upper Midwest, northern Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, you guys are starting to get water temperatures that are warm enough that those bass are starting to enter the pre-spawn phase. They're staging up, those females are getting big with eggs, and the buck males, they're moving up shallow, digging out the beds in the hopes of attracting a big south female to come and deposit their eggs. Right now, for the biggest part of the country, is when you want to try to catch your PB. Whether it's staging fish or whether it's fish on bed. But remember, whenever you're fishing those fish on bed, they can be tricky to catch. And if you do catch one, I urge you, I implore you, please put it right back. We want to protect that next generation of fish, especially if it's a big one. So that being said, what are some of the baits and presentations that we can use right now, regardless of what phase, whether it's pre-spawn, spawn, or like we are here in South Mississippi, entering the post-spawn, what are some spring baits that really get the trick done? Well, everybody and their brother has got a five best baits for April. Although I'm not doing five, I'm doing two baits that are rock solid and a type of presentation that you really need to be on the lookout for during the spawn. And first up, well, as that water warms up, one of the first things that I'm gonna grab is the top water. And right here, this is a good old Cotton Cordell Boy Howdy. When's the last time you saw one of these? This is very similar to an old Smithwick Devil's Horse, except this is plastic and not wood. It's a prop topwater. It's got three trebles and it's got a prop at either end. This is meant to be snapped and jerked on a slack line to get those blades to spit water. You don't straight retrieve these, although you probably could if you really wanted to. But most of the time you want to work these with rips and stops. Treat it like you would a popper, cast it out, let those ripples fade. Give it five, six seconds or so until those ripples fade out and then on slack line, pop it to you. And watch these big girls inhale this thing. That warm water, even if you're 60 degrees or 65 degrees or even in the upper 50s, this is still a viable option. I came to the lake today, I had this tied on and well, within the first few casts, this happened. Those rings dissipate a little bit. I got him. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. Oh, that's a good one. The boy howdy strikes right off of the bat. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish on the old topwater boy howdy. That is a good fish right there, kids. Gorgeous two pound bass. 
the door this two pound bass. Oops, you make a bunch of noise as much as you can. And he was exactly where he was supposed to be. I'm going to wipe my camera off because I'm not taking a chance on having a blurry camera today. Let's see. There we go. All right. That's a gorgeous fish. Nice fish. Good two pound bass to start with. Thank you, buddy. Okay. I'm not trying to pop it that hard. Oh, well, you can see it. That's all I'm doing is slack line, lots of slack in my line. And just that's all I'm looking for is that right there, just a little bit of just a little bit of pop. We're just gonna let it fall. Well, we're gonna let it fall. We're just gonna let it sit there for a second until those rings dissipate. Okay, so something like a prop style topwater, like this good old boy howdy from Cotton Cordell, or even a Smithwick Devil's Horse, or a head and torpedo, something that spits water. Now, a popper would be good, but not a lot of guys are throwing these anymore. This is definitely old school, and as you heard me say quite a few times before, we like to stand out. We want to give the fish something that they don't really see that often, but yet something that's still gonna be attractive to them. So this right here, this is what worked for me today. A devil's horse probably would have done just as well. Even a head and torpedo, but that's what the fish were in the mood for. So a prop style top water is something you should really keep your eye on. The fish like it, and like I said, not a lot of other guys are throwing it. Okay, so next up is a bait that I've already talked about a couple of videos ago, and that is this guy right here. This is just a Senko with a tail spinner on it. And this is one of the ones that I have made. And if you saw the video I did a couple videos back on this particular contraption, you'll know that I caught fish after fish on it. Well, today was no exception. We're at the big lake and I'm still catching good fish with this. I was catching even bigger fish today than I was at the little lake. Well, the big lake just has bigger fish, but still I caught a really nice fish on this dude today. Boy, it's pretty back here. There we go, I got him. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a tank. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good fish. Right in the top of the old bean. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. So, and we got him, we got him good. He was not going anywhere. All right, on the old tail spinner. On the old, perfect. On the old bright blue tail spinner. Let me see what I got here. Beautiful fish, close to two. Oh, 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 don't you slip out of my hand. Nice little fat belly. Beautiful on both sides. This one's close to two pounds. Pound and three quarter. Close to two pounds. Thank you, little buddy. All right. So what you're looking for is something that maybe has a little bit of flash on it. That's the point of this tail spin. It doesn't have to be a stick bait or a Senko. It can be a creature bait. It can be a swim bait. It can be something like a pit boss or a baby brush hog or something of that nature. Even a tube, I would imagine, works. But something just a little bit of flash, especially if you've got some murky water. Although, 
the water here was pretty clear today, and the water at the little lake the other day was gin clear. So it didn't really seem to make a difference whether I was fishing stained water or whether I'm fishing gin clear water. I was still able to get bites by adding a little bit of flash to it. And I'm sure you could fish it several ways. I mean, you can swim it, or you can drag it, or you can even hop it. Vary your retrieve up. Find out what the fish want. Today, I actually had a darker worm on here. This is one of the stick baits that I make. You guys are probably pretty familiar with these right now. But this is what the fish wanted today. I started out with the red colors, but that wasn't attracting as much attention as the darker color. And I suspect the reason for that was, is I was fishing more along shade lines. So this in that darker water, even though it was clear, was standing out a little bit better. And that's what the fish wanted. But either way, add a little bit of flash to your bait. These tail spinners are something that I've started using quite often. And if they keep catching fish the way that they're catching fish for me, I don't see where I'm going to stop using them either. And for you guys up north with the smallmouth, you know smallmouth would crush this. The way smallmouth act, the way they like the loud colors, the way that they like flash, the way that they just have that attack mentality, they would crush these. So give this a try if you're on a smallmouth fishery for sure. And lastly, the thing that we want to talk about is a particular pattern that works really well during the pre-spawn, but especially during the spawn. And that is imitating a bluegill at every turn. Every chance you get, you want to throw bluegill imitators. This is a sure way to fire up those spawning bass. If you're sight fishing beds and you can't get them to commit to anything, throw something with some bluegill colors on it. Even something like the Senko, if it's got orange in it, if it's got red in it, something that will trigger those bass into thinking, hey, that's a bluegill, I need to protect my bed, I need to protect my eggs, they will definitely attack these. And they're pretty ruthless about it. This is kind of my own secret special sauce during the spawn. This is what works so well for me. I tie on bluegill colors. I try to mimic the bluegill as much as I can. Now, during the rest of the year, you guys have heard me say it a million times over, I'm not one for matching the hatch. But right now, bluegill. If you're not throwing bluegill colors and you're in the middle of the spawn, or even in the pre-spawn for that matter, the bluegill colors are what is going to get annihilated. Those bass, they're looking for some payback because, well, those bluegill, we all know, they raid the bass's bed, they eat the eggs, they eat the fry. So the bass really don't need much of a reason other than that. They don't necessarily have to be hungry. As a matter of fact, it's more about protecting the eggs, protecting the fry. That's why these are so lethal, where these can be so good during the spawn. If you can find a good line of shallow water and just line up parallel to it, and you can cast this to it if you've got a little bit deeper water, or even this here, this is a Berkeley pit bull. These things are phenomenal during the spawn, this color right here. And even if you've got a little bit colder water, a little bit more subtle, you want to go with something that doesn't make any rattle at all. Well, this Fritz side here, especially the one with the coffin bill that gets in a little bit deeper water. And don't be surprised if you find some of those bass spawning in just a little bit deeper water. If it's clear enough and they can get sun on those eggs, sometimes they will spawn in water that tends to be a little bit deeper. Although a lot of times they do like to get as shallow as they can, but even still something like this dragged across the bottom by their bed with it nosing in really hard, that'll get their attention. Even if it's something like this that's a little bit further offshore, if those bass think that they're threatened, they will chase down a bluegill to inhale it. But again, good old plastic worm, you know, Texas rigged, wacky rigged, NACO rigged, whatever, throw this up in the bed as opposed to a darker colored worm where they bite that tail and they move it off to the side and they drop it on the bed. They don't do that with something they think is a threat. If they see that color red, they see that color orange. Green, not so much. It's got to have that fleck of orange. It's got to have some red or some orange or something like that in it. That's what really turns them on. So don't miss out on that pattern throw bluegill colors or sunfish colors or whatever the predatory species are in your fishery that prey on the bass beds, on the eggs and on the fry. Match that and watch those bass attack your lures. So there you have it. Right now, 
those topwater baits, especially the prop style topwaters, such as a devil's horse or a boy howdy or even a head and torpedo, they are money right now. Also, a little bit of flash in your soft plastics, such as a tail spinner, watch the improvement it makes. It just drives those fish crazy. And these techniques work on any fishery throughout the country. But if your fishery is entering the spawn or in the middle of the spawn right now, don't miss out on that bluegill pattern. I'm telling you, those big girls will attack that bluegill bait like they're trying to annihilate it because that's exactly what they're trying to do. They've got to protect their beds and they've got to protect the next generation of bass. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.